Let's welcome in someone who knows what it's like to win at the highest level in Philadelphia sports. And, you know, he's he's transitioned now into this full-time media thing, doing an incredible job. We love having him as a big part of our show. And, and I know for Jason, he has seen Jason Kelsey in his close to 15 years in Philadelphia now, a lot of highs and a lot of lows across all the teams. Jason, this one really hurts, man. I mean, you know you know what it's like, and I'm not saying this to be rude, you know what it's like to lose in the playoffs. Yeah. You know what it's like to win in the playoffs. You know as a fan what it's like to watch both. This one really, really, really is sitting hard on the hearts of the of the fans this morning, as it should. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this team was the best team in baseball first half of the season, and uh, really the whole second half of the season, and then what just took place is an unfortunate end to uh, a team that was the trajectory just felt like it was going through the moon. So, um, baseball is a weird sport, man. It really is. It feels like it's probably the most streaky of all the major sports. Yeah. Like when teams I'll just kind of, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. And, it is um, crazy. I grew up in Cleveland, uh, big time Indians fans. 90s teams were just phenomenal, and we never won a championship. Did and you play baseball? I did. I did. I, were you I, good? I was actually really good. I ripped my growth plate off my bone. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you said we that. We were talking about that. But um, I switched over to lacrosse after that because I couldn't throw very I – like, I, I don't know. I, I probably – I was a really good pitcher, but after that I was – Well, you know, you, so you bring up the Indians thing, and it's an interesting – and by the way, let me say Jason with is here, uh, as always, brought to us by Garage Beer because, you know, the garage is always open. Light beer like it used to be. Find Garage Beer at your local retailer or at drinkgaragebeer.com. Official beer – of the Kelsey brothers and dads everywhere. You know, that Indians thing resonates with me, Jason, because the reality is, you know, people in Cleveland, of course, but people across the nation look back in that era and say, what a group. Yeah. Two things they say. What an amazing team, primarily offense, and didn't win at all. Yeah. And and that's the thing. Like, we are dramatically hoping 10 years from now that we don't have that view of our team here. Did a lot. A lot of fun, yeah. a lot of success, a lot of W's, made the playoffs six, seven times, dot, 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 didn't win at all. For sure. And they, they never got that. If they would have had that that 90s Indians team, they would have been down as one of the best eras of any team in probably yeah. Major League Baseball. And yeah. they, because they didn't get that, they're not. You're viewed differently. Yeah. Ben, let me ask you this. Of the three losses, mm-hmm. which one right now hurts you the most? The first one. No, 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 I'm sorry. Let me refer. I, I, wrong question. I, I didn't state it right. 2022, 2023, oh. 2024. As we sit here today, which one do you think hurts you the most? I'm going to say the first loss it, that Wheeler pitched. No, you, no, 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 no. No, he's no. saying which the World year? Series, three seasons, the NLCS, three seasons, or the NLCS. They made the, playoffs. the last three years. Oh. 2022, 2023, 2024. Like, I'm this one, and here's why. Yeah. Losing a set in. Oh, okay. I got you. Losing a set in. And I actually think this team was the best of the three teams. That's that's what I was going to say. I think it's this year because this is the team that underachieved. Like the 2022, that team just struck fire. They right. were the Mets, right? Like that's they right. just Correct. came out of nowhere, uh, blew the lid off of it. Topper came in like what mid season, and they freaking like I don't know. It was just an awesome year. Even yeah. though they lost, it felt like this was a really good group that really competed. And then this year, it feels like. You know, Middleton put so much into it, and they they really, I mean, they started out so hot. Yep. The expectations were through the moon. So to be, this one felt like it was like, man, they just, they really hit a dud there. You also yeah. had a ton of guys this year, and I'm not saying this is too different than the last two years, but this year you had a ton of guys in their prime, other than JT, and you had a lot of guys healthy. Yeah. And I mean, Ben, you know... How often do you not get that combination? Right. You know, and, you get to the playoffs, I mean, and a dude's out, this guy's out. I mean, we don't know that Zach Wheeler's going to be healthy next October. Correct. We have no idea if he's going to be healthy next correct. October. He's and, well rested. Yeah, right. <laughs> I knew yeah. you were going to go there, Rand. <laughs> um, I, I'm still going to say healthy. last year was was tough to swallow. They go two up 2-0 against the Diamondbacks, going out to the desert. Yeah. And then they, they lose that one. I think they were they would have dismantled the, the Rangers. Let's listen to Rob Thompson on, on the three years because this was an interesting exchange last night. Rob Thompson post game, and I know a lot of people this morning are calling for his job. I'm not one of them, but I understand why people are. I'm not saying it's not something to think about, and it'll be fascinating in the next week or so to find out if if you know ultimately John Middleton. You know, you don't think he's not thinking about it. I think he is thinking he's about definitely it. Definitely. Yeah, I think he's thinking it. about it, and he should. I think he should yeah. think about it. I, in the end, I want I want zip Rob Thompson, but I know a lot of people say to do so. Let's listen to Topper you after need the to game. Purge some of the things that are creating 
negative vibes. No, I, Alec I, Bone I, I, I being one changes of them. Changes have to happen. Is Cha- the point major where changes, changes are. I don't, yeah. I I don't know that it's tougher. Right? Major changes. Well, I blame the players so much more than Rob Thompson. Me too. I, I so do too. Much more. I do too, yeah. but they're not mutually exclusive. I understand. Yeah. I agree with that. Here's Rob Thompson after the game last night. I know this answer will bother a lot of people. Listen, and then we'll discuss. Rob, it's been diminishing returns in the postseason versus improvements during the regular season since you've been the manager um, and you have a very well-paid ball team and a bunch of stars. Um, Can you address, I guess, the perception that the team is kind of going backward? Do you feel like the the, the returns are diminishing? No, I don't don't think so at all. You know, like I said earlier, um, now I don't like losing series and I don't want to win a World Series, but Anything can happen in a short series. And, you know, they they pitched our offense really well, and um, and they they got to our bullpen. So, uh, but I don't I don't see us going backwards. Now. All right, so I knew that last part's going to bother people. See, here's the thing. It's a complicated matter, and here's why. They are getting diminishing returns in the postseason. That's clear. You can't go from two it's games factual. away from winning yeah. the World Series to five games away from winning the World Series to 10 games away from winning the World Series and not have diminishing returns. But here's the trick to it. You actually can, and I believe the Phillies are a better team than they were the last two years. I actually believe that. I think the 2011 Phillies were better than the 2008 Phillies. Better starting pitching this year. But Absolutely. also, like, what does this mean? Like, I, I, well, I mean, like no, 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 I get what you're saying, but hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. What it means is it makes it a complicated conversation for the offseason. What I mean is regular do. season doesn't matter the same way it used to, and we have to accept that as baseball fans. Oh, what I mean is the I best teams are the teams ago. that are hot in October. Correct. The Mets are a better team than the Phillies. The Philly, and, and to your point, I get what you're saying. The Phillies were a better team over the course of the regular season, yeah. but they weren't a better team than the 2022 Phillies because the 2022 Phillies were better when it mattered most, and that's the end of the, like, that's what it is. Well, that's part of what it is. I, I don't know, man. I don't know that it's that simple. I mean, yeah, you, I don't think it's that simple. I think a yeah. lot of times when you're coming from out of nowhere. Teams aren't really prepared for that. The reality is, through the first half of the season, through the way the offseason went, everybody's been focused on all these opponents have been trying, like, we're going to have to worry about the Phillies, and they've been thinking about this, and I think that that plays into it. I think, um, you know, I I, I don't think that um, just because of them catching fire one year doesn't necessarily mean that that team would overcompete this team over the course I of agree. the season. I don't think that's necessarily the case. Yeah. This is a unique situation where the Mets are that spectacular. Like, I hate to say that, but the Mets have been the best record in all of baseball yeah. since the, well, the dumb see, grimace thing. Well, see, I would thing. say our play and they've is actually spectacular. Played. I, well, don't that's what I'm they, I don't know that they I don't think they actually play, are. They play with a confidence since that grimace thing. They play like that team that has that record. They've transformed. Like, we are average based on our record, which is... The last know, three months. I know. That's the, the thing last we're not making months. a big When we talk about this being a great team, they were a great team for three months. No, like, they were not great the, the whole course of the season. But see, but they look, were okay, average but James, as much as they were great. Okay, but the 93 Phils went 52 and 48 in their last 100 games. They were average for 100 games. It just so happens when they played a best of seven, they beat the Braves. I mean, I, look. Again, I think it complicates the offseason. I know there's a lot of people that want Boehm out. I'm not one of them. I mean, if you get a great offer, sure. But, like, I'm not looking to dump Alec Boehm. Now, there are guys you got major issues. I need Tra- guys Trey who Turner have their is the mind big- Trey is the straight. biggest problem. Get your head right. I need, I, like, no more time to babysit. Truly. That is what it feels like you must do if Alec Bohm is your third baseman. Well, here's what I'll say about babysitting. So, I'm, I'm more pro Rob Thompson than some. But I will say this. I think Trey Turner... Ben, let me address this one to you. Mm-hmm. I think Trey Turner could have used some Dallas Green in his ear in the last six months. Like, dude, here's the deal. You're going to not swing at bad pitches, or I'm going to embarrass you. I'm going to yell at you in front of the players. I'm going to call you out in front of the fans and the media. I'm going to pull you out of a game. Like, there is an argument that if Rob Thompson did those sort of Dallas Green, Bill Parcells tactics that maybe the Phillies are still playing because while it might have made Trey Turner uncomfortable in August, maybe he would have been better in, you know, this week, in October. Yeah, first of all, that's not Rob Thompson's M.O. Secondly, that's not how athletes are handled nowadays. But maybe some need it. Maybe some need it. 
But it's not going to be. It's not going to be open. It to, would open be behind to the, public. the scenes. Yeah. It's not going to be open to the public. Well, let me let's say this. It doesn't have to be. I know for the athlete, ideally it would be. It doesn't have to be. Yeah. Listen, the child doesn't want to be disciplined. But you know as a wow. parent, you discipline the child. Whether society tells you you can or can't, I know you as a dad. I'm mm-hmm. not saying you're old school, you know, old school, old school. I'm okay, pretty old school. But, <laughs> but, 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 pretty old school. <laughs> hey now. <laughs> but... Discipline is discipline. But can Topper do it, to Ben's point? No, and that that's... might be a reason they might need to make a change if it Topper doesn't have that in his bag. We've never seen, other than benching Bohm in this series, like we've never seen him really do anything like that. All right, let's get to three different Twitter poll questions of the day that speak to a lot of what we're, we're kind of in right now with this discussion. All three questions brought to us by Armin Chevrolet. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And at Armin Chevrolet, you'll be seeing pink all month long as they honor survivors and, of course, remember those that have passed away. We all hope for a cure. ArminChevy.com, three poll questions. One, do you think Rob Thompson should be fired, yes or no? Question two, which hitter disappointed you the most in the series? Alphabetical order. Is it Bohm, Harper, Real Muto, or Trey? Personally, I think it's ridiculous Harper's in this poll. Seltzer insists he has to be in there. He's in the poll. Question three, which, pitch, which pitcher disappointed you the most? Estevez, Hoffman, Nola, Strom. John, what's your answer to the pitcher poll? Estevez, Hoffman, Nola, Strom. Man, I mean, man, I think it's Hoffman because I expected so much more, and he was, over the course of four games, Yeah, on, I couldn't depend on him at all. I think it's Where Hoffman once, or Strom, but I'm very tempted to say Nola because he's the one guy making $175 million, and when it was a 1-1 series, like, Hoffman and Strom are kind of out of nowhere, guys, kind of. I mean, Hoffman's really an out-of-nowhere guy. I mean, Strom is a, he's supposed to be a, a linchpin. Game three, I'm Darn handing, uh, sorry, Nola. Sorry, sorry, Nola, I'm sorry, I said the wrong name. Nola, like, I'm handing you the ball, sure. my man. On the road, 1-1, go he's lead me to a victory. He's and, our 1-B ace. Yeah, and, and like, Nola gave up two earned runs going into the sixth inning. Okay, he struck out the side in the fifth. You know how hard it is to pitch knowing your offense isn't going to score for you? Every pitch has to be precise and perfect. Otherwise, you're going to fall behind the eight ball. But then the sixth inning happened. But then but the sixth inning happened. Inning happened. I agree with you. So he ends up giving up four earned runs total. All right? The, the offense doesn't score. Yeah. I'm with you, Ben. I, I'm I thought sorry, he was too hard man, on Nola, it's, too. It's, I'm with you. This is 100% on the offense and the bullpen. That's it. You can say what you want about Aaron Nola. Aaron Nola did a fine job. But these guys don't score runs. They don't score. Last time I checked, if you don't score more runs than the opponent, you lose. Yeah, that's right. All right let's it's get... not about the better team. or who. It's about who plays better. The Mets played better. Period. No question. Let's talk to Ed in Phoenixville. Ed, good morning. Uh, morning, Joe. Uh, morning, Ben. Um, uh, Mr. Seltzer, i, I got to apologize to you because I was actually one of those guys at the trade deadline who was saying, like, oh, there's so many teams that have these 500 r- records that are in it. They dr- they're driving the price up. And I saw what happened, frankly, since the Oakland series where we let Mason Miller and Brett Rooker get on a plane. That was, you know, just kind of emblematic of, you know, this is, you know, I mean, put it this way, like three years ago, my wife and I just had our second kid and, you know, there was no new cars to be found. We needed a new minivan. We overpaid for a minivan. Yes. We got the minivan. It's That's what a we bad needed. spot, and, man. And <laughs> well, the so, production you overpaid. The production for a led minivan. to that. But yeah. he had to. That's the point. That's his point. And I, it's yeah. a good point. I, the I Phillies had to overpay yeah. if they needed someone, and they didn't. And overpay, by the way, no top 100 prospects got traded the deadline. Like, how much are you really overpaying for so, these guys? And I'll tell you what bothers me the most about the deadline it's not a Stevis. Because I really did feel very confident in four relievers at that moment. And that included Alvarado back then. It's, it's, the, it's the Hayes thing. Like, come on, guys. The village idiot knew Johan Rojas wasn't good enough. The village idiot knew uh, Brandon Marsh can't hit left-handed pitchers. You know, we knew Pache wasn't good enough. I mean, we, we knew that they had two, they had one and a half holes in the outfield. They had one and a half holes. You could, you could say, I can, I can go with Marsh against the righty. I can't go with them against the lefty, and I got no one else in the other spot. We all knew that. I mean, they knew that. They sent Rojas to the minors. And I will always be f- convinced that was not to bring him back 
initially, like right away, but guys got hurt, dudes were ineffective, and then it's like, all right, well, I guess we're back to, Mar- uh, to Rojas. And then here comes October, there's still no solution. All right, Rojas Marsh, Rojas Marsh, uh, Hayes, uh, Weston Wilson. I mean, how hard that's is a, it? That's a disaster. How hard has it been to learn how to bunt, like on it, it, a crash course in bunting, like going and, and getting the uh, the cliffs notes. That's on the bunting. problem, John. It should have been a crash course. It should have been started working okay. on in spring training. You don't work on it two weeks before the playoffs. But it should I'll, be worked on every spring training every year. Yeah, there should be it something should be the teams on in the minor oh, exactly in the minor leagues. Like this should be organizational. But, but, is I'll, it? but I'll but I'll add of another. Not. Why? No, well, no organization. No, do. They, they don't as an organization. But I'll add this as it relates to Rojas. They were trying to have him bunt early this season. The yeah. guy, oh, yeah, with he Rojas stinks too. at yep. it. Yeah. Rojas, Why does he stink? Because so he stinks. <laughs> ben, how he hard is because it? He stinks because he stinks anymore to too. Do like, that. It, it 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 should be learned. <laughs> it should be okay. It should All right, be Jason, Jason, let me ask you this question: yeah. As a player, when a season ends and there is this kind of reaction in the town. And yeah. I'm sure as a player, you would agree with some of it and disagree with some of it. Because some I'm guessing you think is an overstatement. Some you know is completely accurate. How yeah. does the play, like when you would lose an Eagles season in the playoffs and the town comes crashing down, yeah. what is that like as a player? Um, I mean, you're crashing down yourself. So you're, a lot of it is internalized. I mean, you're, to be honest, you're not paying as much attention. You're, uh, you know, you're Eeyore out there in your own head thinking about what could have been and what could I have done better? Why did we fall short? Um, especially the years where you underachieve, you're like you know it's it, it hits you even harder, right? Like I think when you're not the expected one to to continue on, it, it doesn't affect you as much because it feels like you guys still did better than what you probably should have. But you know when you're a team that has a lot of talent that's been uh, hyped up and you you were at that pinnacle at one point and then it falls short, it it stings. It stings a lot, and you're looking for answers. You're you're trying to figure out what could have happened, and you know you're going to drag yourself for a while, you know, go out to some of the bars around town and try and yeah. get it out of you. But, I mean, it's uh, it's it's going to – until you start back, you're just going to be thinking about it, right? So these guys will be obviously weighing on this hard. Yeah. Um, especially this group, it feels like they've been a pretty tight group. Yeah. Um, and they so. know they might get ripped up. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, sure I mean there's going to there's gonna be changes. How deep it goes, we don't know. There's going to be changes. Let me ask you one more, though, on what we just were at there, Jason. Sure. So – I would say you were a little bit or a lot more ingrained in the Philadelphia culture than some players because it was just part of your thing. You enjoyed it. I also lived here year round. You lived that's right. You know, I Li- think that that's part of it. I lived yeah. in the city, I lived here year round and um you know, you know, I went out. Like, yep. I wasn't just like somebody who was here just for the And a WIP yeah. listener. Like you were yeah. a, you were in our Okay, so as a WIP listener but a player when a season would end, would you be more inclined more inclined to listen to WIP or not listen to WIP in the two or three days after the season ended? Uh, definitely listening to WIP if we win, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking, and I win, I'm taking all that uh, that good uh, vibes in. But um, I would also listen when we lo- when we lost sometimes. And some of it I don't have a choice. My wife would have it on the car, and I'm like, all right. <laughs> I don't know if she's awesome. trying to send me a message, but um, <laughs> uh, I think wow. it's, I, I, you know, I think... Um, some coaches say, you know, don't listen to any of that stuff, which I think is, you know, I don't think you can do that in today's age. I think you're going to have to listen to that stuff. And I think that it's important to when, you know, this town, as unbelievably awesome of a sports town as it is, they live in the extremes. And as whenever you're listening, um, it's important not to take uh, the unbelievable congratulations and good things they're saying about you because a lot of that is nonsense. And then it's also important not to take the bad stuff as well. And I think good players know how to navigate that. And I think, um, but it's, I, I always like listening to the fans and media's perspective from the outside because I think a lot of the times internally you rationalize things and you think about things from such a high level that sometimes you miss the like bare bones of like, dude, these guys were just flat and they had no energy. And like, how do we correct that? Like, you know, we're thinking about all these numbers and all these slugging percentages. And it's like, dude, nobody's on base. And like, if everybody's trying to hit a home run or hit an unbelievable shot, how do you build any momentum in a game? Yeah. Like it feels like when this team's hot, they're hot because the bats are connecting and when they're cold, it's like everybody's just striking out. And it's, um, I think, 
in order to build momentum, you would think, hey, let's just get a base hit, and then the next guy, maybe the pr- pitcher starts feeling a little bit of pressure, right. maybe the guy behind him feels some confidence because exactly. his buddy just got on base. And I think uh, a lot of times that stuff kind of gets lost in a lot of these evaluations. But fans, and for me, it's so apparent when you're watching the games. Yeah, all right, let's get a lot of calls in here. Look, speaking of fans, I mean, this is the day for everyone to really have have a say. And, and I know this one really hurts a lot for all of us. It really does. I, I felt last night, you know, especially for the young kids, the 10 year old, I know what it, I know what it's like to go to bed crying because the team you love, their season just ended. I mean, I know that feeling. So it's a tough day for the kids. It's a tough day for all of us. Let's go to Steve in Deptford. Steve, you're on WIP. Hey, Joe. How are you? Good morning, buddy. Hi, John. How are What's you? What's up, Steve? I'm right, not good. Things. <laughs> I know you're not good, but I miss nobody's good. But this is what I really got to say. And I'm glad you corrected it in the very beginning of the show, Joe. Hmm. Listen, the Phillies are just okay. Their last 98 games, they were 50 and 48. Yep. I mean, mm-hmm. even, if they didn't have that first couple of months, they wouldn't even made the playoffs. I mean, I mean, and, 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 and it's, that's a disgrace to start out the season like they did and just falter the way they did. And there's a couple of things. My son, Nikki just called me. And he said to me, Dad, why are, they, why are they burying Turner? And the reason why is they're burying Turner. Listen, they gave that guy $300 million to perform. The guy swings at every possible pitch outside. And it looks weak. He, he, why is Nicky such a yeah, huge hey, Trey Turner fan, Steve? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know because you know what? Well, you know, he's a made man. He won a World Series. Listen, the reason why he's on the Phillies is because of Bryce Harper. That's the bottom line. And the next thing, too, I want to tell you guys, the guy, the guy was batting 352 at the All-Star break. His average dropped 65 points from the All-Star break until the end of the season. The guy's just you – know, he sticks to defense. His defense – Yeah, he's below is, average. He's uh, a below average yeah. defender. The he biggest thing, Steve, the biggest thing for me was he just had a horrible approach at the plate and did not know how much easier – he could make it on himself if he just made a determination before a pitch. I'm actually just not going to swing at this pitch because this yeah, will probably I like I, I would I would yeah. I would like a player obviously to be able to see a pitch, want to swing, consider swinging, but choose not to because you have a good enough eye. Lenny Dykstra, generally Kyle Schwarber, guys like that. But when you don't have that, you can take it to the next step and say, "Yeah, I got a two zero count. You know what? This thing's probably going in the dirt." I'm not, I'm not going to swing. I, I know I'm. You know how much easier that makes it for an athlete to stand there knowing he's not going to swing in the next two seconds. Yeah, but he doesn't. He does, it doesn't go through his. It doesn't compute in his brain. No. One more thing, Joe. Before sure. you hang up on me, sure. I want to mention one thing. Last week, I think you were mentioning about who was a really hard player besides Pete Rose. I think that was your question. I don't know. Right? I don't. Know. I, don't I, I don't think so. But, but anyway, well, anyway, I want to tell you, hmm. and you've been mentioning him the whole morning. If Lenny Dykstra was on this team yeah. yep. and he's seen the way that this team was playing, man, he would be – everybody would be accountable. Lenny Dykstra was a hard-playing center fielder, and he gave it every – and he was a disciplined and a hard player. A lot of people don't remember Well, that, that and here's he the other thing – and, Steve, here's the other thing he was. Smart baseball His nickname player. was Nails. Obviously, he was yeah. hard. <laughs> the, was baseball hard. Acumen, that. Yeah. the baseball acumen was there. It That's was. what I don't see. And Chase, and Chase Utley had that. Correct. No question. It's like it. it it's, how, it's how to play the game. How because they watch to play the, the game. game. Yeah, that's they watch crazy. It. All right, let's listen to Castellanos talking after the game last night. We're going to play a lot of audio. The various you know players and manager, obviously, from what they said post game. Castellanos post game last night, a perspective. It's not how you start; it's how you finish. Uh, and we started fantastic. You know, we were the best team in baseball in the first half, and everything. Everybody in baseball and all the fans and everybody are saying, this is our year, this is our year, this is our year. I don't know if expectations put out of pressure. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I can speculate. But one thing I know is that we didn't cross the finish line. Did they get full of themselves? Maybe. Did they get comfortable? I think definitely. I feel really confident when they had that record that there was, and listen, this is some human nature, like, they knew June 1st they were going to make the playoffs. Dethrottling. Right? There was, ben, there was no question June 1st they were making the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So does that take some edge off? I mean, I, I found it weird. Let me put it this way. 
So I would bring Rob Thompson back. A lot of people say don't bring him back. But I'll, I'll tell you some things about Rob Thompson this year that re- really bug me. I mean, John, when JT would have an off day, it's the ninth inning, two outs, guy on, you're down by a run. Multiple times oh. he's not allowed to pinch hit. Harper, too, remember? Yeah, yeah Harper. I, I remember. Like, like, yeah. like that, what was that? That doesn't, that doesn't, it doesn't work. There's a winnable game. By the way, while you knew you were going to make the playoffs, you didn't know you were going to have home field advantage. In the end, they didn't get it. Now, I'm not saying that's why they lost last night or won. I mean, whatever. I mean, they might have lost the Mets. They might have lost the Padres. You can break it up any which way. But yeah. there was a there was a lack of – here's what there was a lack of. Continuing the sense of urgency that was the mantra – in spring training and April. What sense of urgency have you ever seen Rob Thompson have? Well, they had it in the beginning this year. They had this thing where it was, we are pissed off because we lost last year in October to Arizona, and we're going to come out with our hair on fire. Like, we are maverick at the beginning of Top Gun. Yeah. And then, little, and then we lost. And then they lost that loving feeling. They lost the edge. Yeah. They lost the edge. And they never recaptured that. recaptured it. Yeah. It's true. They this is why I was back. saying they're not true. that good. That that was my point. I they they them, weren't that uh, great. I remember the preseason. They were talking a lot about the World Series already, mm-hmm. and I remember saying like this: "Like man, you got a long way off before that." And it's I don't mm-hmm. know. It, it felt like you know, just to what you're saying. Like they they peaked really soon. They were really hot, and then yeah. when it cooled off, it was so far disconnected from those totally. emotions that it never really recaptured so, it. John, yeah. here's what it reminds me of, because Jason, I don't think your team's really had, when you guys won in 2017, kind of came out of nowhere. 18, yeah. there's expectations, but there's also appreciation because you just won. I'm talking from a fan. Okay? Sure. Yeah. John, your group, and you were only part of it for a couple years, probably, the and the Sixers currently, but not to the same level, because there's not the same level of belief. Like, the Donovan and Doc Eagles, Yeah, we did talk about we talked about the Super Bowl in March because... Oh, it's the first thing I heard. I got here to town. I signed as an unrestricted free agent in March. Uh, and I got here for the off-season program, the first day of the off-season program. And that was what everyone was asking. Everyone who spoke to me was bringing up the Super Bowl in March. I'd just gotten here. I I couldn't believe it. I, I'm coming from five years in Oakland where... That was never brought up. That concept, well, it's, it's more intense the here. Super Bowl concept was not, that cart was not put before the well, horse it was all the NFC of the season. It went oh, 100%. It was yeah. the success True. established Correct. in this market. I, but and, and understand, never, and no Super Bowl but understand yeah. I'm coming from a place where we just went to the Super Bowl and lost, where we just went to the AFC Championship and lost, where we just went to the AFC Championship. It was the tuck rule game the year before that. Like We mm-hmm. were up there. We were around that spot. Uh, trying to be there yeah. every, you know, in the postseason. Well, every he, year. I guess here's what I'm trying to get at, James. I want to ask you this, and then we're going to get right back to the phones. And, and this is going to be a multi week conversation, okay? But here's what I'm trying to drive at right now, James. When, when people crash down on them as hard as the Phillies are being crashed down upon right now, like Alec Bohm, you got to get rid of them. Is that like, I thought last night. In the NCAA tournament, and that's what I kind of consider the baseball playoffs now. It's a tournament. NCAA tournament, there's four one seeds. At a minimum, three of them are not going to win the championship. I mean, they're just not. There's a lot of teams. Like, I look at the baseball playoffs right now, and I say, man, this format is not great for the greatest teams because now the lesser teams get in, the wild cards get in, short little best of five. I mean, you can play four bad games and be over fast. So I ask this question to you, James. The crash down on their head. Is it too excessive, or is it on point? No, it's on point, because it's not just this season. It's it's the continuation of three years to the point we made before of getting worse and worse and worse in terms of how you finish the season. But, like there, this are 12, group, but there are 12 teams that make get the playoffs. It, I get it, but They've this group knows further. what it takes. They've been there. They've been there. And and if it were, if it looked different, Joe, if they lost games 7-6 to six and, you know, 5-4, and they were hitting and players were making plays, it would be a different story. But yeah, we but saw we'd these, still bitch about something. We we'd would. Still we say would. The I agree, but you asked me, was it warranted? I'm saying it's yeah. warranted because of what we saw, because Look, of how it happened. Here's where I'm at on warranted. Trey Turner, a thousand, 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 thousand percent warranted to be as criticized and more than people are. Because for that money and that experience, you got to know how to play better. There are guys like Ro- Rojas shouldn't have been on the team. That's Dombrowski's fault. 
you know, Hoffman and Strom, I, I, I don't understand how they lost their head. I also know they're not supposed to be Mariana Rivera and Dennis Eckersley. So I, I, I you know, but like it was stunning to me that they just collapsed. They just collapsed. Joe, you should be able to live with Rojas. That was always the point. No, no but I no, never no. believed that. I, I'm sorry, Rhea. Uh, I, no, no, because you can't of the defense. live with. You, I can't I don't accept care about his defense. No. I'm I don't sorry. care about it that much. No. At some point, his you got to freaking is hit his offense. You cannot be an almost guaranteed 0 for four and be a playoff baseball player. Correct. You, you just can't. Correct. The How rest does it seem of like we have an entire outfield hit. of no, correct that's as the, well? That's the bigger issue. That is the I mean, bigger seriously, issue. Seriously, if you're rel- if you're blaming it on Johan Rojas, your team is sucks. No, but no, I hear you. But I'm blaming it. On Dave on Dombrowski. Dave Dombrowski. Yeah. Pedro, As you should. Pedro Feliz may have been the worst Philly on the 08 starting lineup, mm-hmm. but you knew you were going to probably get a hit, you know, once every... Ended up getting the winning hit. You got the winning hit in the World know, Series. I mean, come on. You got the winning hit in the World Series. All right, real quick, before we go further, let's... Uh, Tell you right now, you can actually tomorrow on the show win tickets to the Eagles Browns game. So, leading into every Eagles home game, um, we give away a pair of tickets, of course, courtesy. Yes, Eagles, we're turning our lonely eyes to you, courtesy of Novacare Rehabilitation, the power of physical therapy. All right, so today uh, and this whole week, we've been doing some Eagles Browns, you know, tie ins with some of the names that have been said. Today, we'll present the name Jeff Garcia. Oh, yeah. And the You're name out of it is... today, huh? Yeah, yeah, I am. Game. I'm gonna listen, James. My team lost last That's night. So it stinks. I get We're it, all... pal. I get it. <laughs> I forgot to even tee it. Coming up at eight o'clock, your chance to know a name. <laughs> I know. I know. Like, I'm so... You usually tell me to put my alarm on way <laughs> before know. it goes off. My alarm went off without you saying anything. So. All right. Here's the deal. Know the name Jeff Garcia tomorrow. Know the name we told you on Tuesday. Know the name we told you on Wednesday. We've said three names now. We do it every. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we pre- present the name of a current or former uh, Eagles player. And he was a when good you, football player. Man. He was a very good football good player. football player. And he was the quarterback of both teams. So know that name tomorrow and the other names, and you can win Eagles tickets tomorrow in our program. Got to listen at 8 o'clock. All right, let's go to the phones. Let's talk to Dr. <laughs> Gina. Gina, good morning. Uh, morning. I'm not going to say good morning. I'm just going to say good morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, you know, here's the thing from my perspective. Um, I have disagreed with so many of Rob Thompson's calls throughout, not just through this series, but going back and back. I've never quite gotten the way he perceives what should be done. I've try to see his point of view sometimes i've kind of like mushed my point of view to sort of run parallel to his point of view but i i feel like his brand of baseball has kind of come and gone um i recognize that he's like the fatherly type and that a lot of these guys appreciate how loving and nice he is but sometimes you just got to be a hard ass i agree with that i agree and do what needs to be done and not worry about somebody's feelings. Trey Look, I think, I think he it. trusts the players too much. I think you're right. Period. That's, exactly that's, what the, I, that's yes. it. He trusts yes. the players too yes. much. And, and, you know, there's other things that you could look to to yesterday. First of all, that the foul ball that wasn't a foul ball, mm-hmm. um, you know, that. My gosh, I lost. When that happened, I said, we're done. That's it. We are done. If, if this is the way this is trending. And to be honest with you, I, I, I turned the game off before it was over, came back to it. No, I guess I did watch it, but I didn't watch all the post game stuff there. I went switched over to uh, Comcast, you know, sports net or whatever it's called mm-hmm. these days. Um, and I could only listen to so much of the analysis too, because everybody was so angry that it was very difficult. I think to actually like pick apart the details. Because everybody's just so PO'd. Well, and here's Um, the thing. There's so much to pick apart, Gene. I mean, you know, John and I mm. detailed it earlier. The list of who did their job Mm. as opposed to the list of who didn't do their job. I mean, it's it's like a a list of four people earlier. And I got five. I include Bryce in the good category. John and James did not. I mean, listen, Bryce's numbers, and I thought. The good list. Wheeler, Suarez, Sanchez, and Castellano. That's my list. Yep. I agree with Richard. And And, And I put Bryce in there, but others don't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would put Bryce in there as well, simply because there were spark, sparkling moments. Let's just say. Well, I mean, let me but put overall. it. This way. Gina, think of it this way: Bryce Harper in this series. Now, I know he a couple of times he had some late hits late in the game when you're already down big. I think that happened twice. Okay, but Bryce Harper for the series hit three thirty three 
with a 529 on base percentage and a 750 slugging percentage. I think it's a I'm travesty that. that people come uh, down on Because him. people will not forget that six inning. And bat. they shouldn't. I mean, that's the sorry. worst bat of the series. Like, and, that was, and let's not I mean, also forget that hitting a baseball is the hardest freaking thing to do <laughs> yeah. in sports. He had a 1279 OPS this year in the playoffs. Totally. I mean, yeah. if, if, the guys if you in, put this on Bryce Harper, you're foolish. Oh, he's not <laughs> top. I think he's bottom of the list of blame. But, he's but on my it. point is he yeah. doesn't get no blame. He's the leader of this baseball club. Like any other player in this situation, if they are the best player on the team, we're going to come down on them. Yeah, like, but here's what, I, James, here's the way I look at it. And Gina, thanks for the call. If, if Schwerber and Trey are on base in front of them, God forbid if there's a nine hole They were in that out. sixth inning. It was first but, and but, second, but, two walks. But, he swung out three straight pitches. James, See ya. If, He's if not he, allowed to make an out? Yeah, that's not fair. In that spot, no. Like that no? spot, no. Well, the wait, series James, turns you're, there. you're a smart guy. He's not allowed to make an out. You, the you know no. I'm being a little aggressive well, here, but that's why we're telling you are overreacting. Bryce did not come up big enough. Like, I get it. He wasn't horrible. He is last on my list of blame, okay. but he's not one of the four I'm not blaming. All right, John. The, I think that's sensible. John, the whole team, including the manager, the pitchers, and the pl- and the position players, who bothered you the most? Oh, man. I think from a grand scheme of things, it's hard to say Jeff Hoffman, but he is as far from what I expected as what any, he co- any he player looked like. He completely, him and Strom I think, collapsed. Well, Strom also, but Alec Bohm, I, I don't know what happened to him. I This season has been so incredibly disappointing for my understanding of Alec Bohm and his commitment to this team and his teammates and everything that goes with that. It was bizarre where it went. Well, it was it was bizarre. We, I, f- I feel like I can't depend on that guy. All right, so let's listen to Bryce Harper after the game, his perspective. World Series two years ago, Game 7 LCS last year, now this. What does this team have to do to get over the hump, and do you think this, these are the guys that do it next year? It's got to be better. Um, got to finish the job. I mean, obviously, we got a great group of guys in here. Um, got a really good core. Um, just wasn't able to get the job done. Here's more on Bryce because he continued on more on his, you know, mindset last night. Do you think you guys have like the group as it is is, is good enough to win, or do you think you need to to, you know, to make some big changes? Uh, I mean, obviously we're gonna have some guys that are out of this clubhouse, so um, that's a job for Dave and and John to you know figure out what they want to do. All right, Ben, let me ask you this question: mm-hmm. the most prominent Philly that will not be back next year is who? How far do the changes go? I say the most prominent Philly, probably Alec Bohm. <gasps> do you think he is gone? I do. It's <laughs> a good guess. Wow. There, John. <laughs> and, that was a serious <laughs> guess. <laughs> and, and Alec Bohm, as everybody knows, is my, is my guy. Like, I, I picked him to win a batting title in, in spring yes. training. Yes. Wow. And he was well on his way. And then his hand injury came and... Can I ask you? He's let me ask you. Let, let me ask you this question. There's a, a lot of it's, guys. It's a different mindset from what I see out of him as well. No, I understand that, and and it's, it was very disappointing at the end. There's what a, happened to his toughness? Did he ever have toughness? Did we th- pretend like he had I don't toughness? Know, John, I don't know because it doesn't seem like there's any that exists at this point. Well, there's it, also it's, this it's pos- so there's also this possibility though. It just happened to be in a seven month season. You know, you're going to run into your slumps. It happened to be his worst slump at the biggest time, and it compounded upon itself because he. Put additional pressure on himself. All right. Well, I don't. I, I just. I, just I don't it. appreciate you acting like an impetuous child. No, I, I in don't the like that either. And, and that's that's where I think that's why he's not going to be here because I mm-hmm. don't know. I, I think they may have gotten fed up with that part of I it. I hope so. Uh, I I love Alec Bohm. I wish he would stay here. But a, they're going to have to pay him. Yeah, you're getting close. You're getting close. You're getting close. You're getting close. And close B, to that. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating. It's not easy to figure out how to change this thing up because. You know, Trey is basically untradeable. Castellanos' contract doesn't help you. He obviously finished strong, but was bad for a good stretch. I think that's easy, though. I think that change is an well, no, easy Boehm, one There's a make. market for Alec Bohm. You sure. want to trade Alec Bohm, there's some teams he that will produces. take Alec Bohm. I guess and he was second in the league in doubles this year. Yeah. I mean, Alec Bohm's a pretty solid player. But he played like a you know disaster. I at the don't end of the want year. him here in Philadelphia. All right, any Jason longer, with his say that. Jason with us in studio. Phone calls at 215-592-9494. 
Jason knows. I text him last night. I'm like, dude, I don't think we're talking Eagles yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we're getting there. All right, a lot going on here. Phone calls on the demise of the Philly season as we roll on. More of what was said post game last night coming up next on 94 WIP.